Hello there, Chris Gunning from TyroldHack.com here uh, with what may be one of the biggest videos I've done yet so strap in if your seat has straps if it doesn't um, I suppose just cling on to your seat uh, just, seat safety is, is, is the priority is what I'm saying um, you may or may not have noticed that uh, Sega Mega Drive Classics or Sega Genesis Classics if you're from the old US of States is coming out um, in just a few days 6th of December actually it's coming out um, and it's already been released on it was released on Steam first as a kind of weird bit by bit uh, package where you bought each game, each old Mega Drive game individually. Um, then it came to PS4 and Xbox One um, and a kind of all-in-one bundle with like 50 odd games uh, put included. And now it is coming to Switch, um, a really similar version of the PS4 and Xbox One. Not identical, uh, but I'll get to that in a bit. Um, and yeah, I've had it for a couple of weeks now. Sega gave me a copy to um, kind of have a look at and, and make this video. So what you now see before you is said video. Now, obviously, there's like I say, there's 50 odd games. There's 51 games specifically in the Switch version. Um, and not every game is going to be immediately recognisable to you. Uh, so that is the purpose of this video. I'm going to go through all 51 games um, and it basically explain what they are uh, so that if you're not kind of clued up on what certain games are, everyone knows Sonic the Hedgehog but not everyone may know Gain Ground for example. Um, so hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a good idea as to what all 51 games are and how they play. Um, naturally since there are 50 odd games here um, I'm going to just fire through them because nobody wants to be here for five hours watching uh, me talk a load of crap about all these games. So um, don't be annoyed if you're an enormous fan of uh, Fantasy Star 3 and I'll only give it 30 seconds that we need to fire on because <laughs> my mouth, yeah, my, otherwise my mouth will dry up speaking of which I need to crack open an iron room before we get started. <coughs> Nectar of the Gods. Okay, let's go. First up is Alex Kidd and the Enchanted Castle. This is the fifth game in the Alex Kidd series. Um, they released a load of them on the Master System. Uh, obviously the most famous one being Alex Kidd and Miracle World, which was a fantastic game. Uh, but you had stuff like Alex Kidd and Shinobi World and High Tech World and all that kind of stuff, but this is the his kind of first move over the Mega Drive. Alex Kidd was, seemed like he was going to be like Sega's mascot until Sonic turned up. Um, I don't think Enchanted Castle helped much because it's not the best game in the series by by some margin. The controls are really slippery, um, and even years and years and years after um, of me playing it, I still like die regularly in the first level because it's just so awkward to control. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's an interesting kind of curio of what could have been um, in the future. Like, like if, if Sonic had never happened, for all we know, there could have been more Alex Kidd games, and he could have become the hero. But um, this is kind of the, the end of the road for Alex Kidd. So it's, it's, it's interesting to start the package with like a, um, a retirement of sorts for, for the, the previous generations. This is like Alex Kids. Uh, and they maybe didn't know at the time this is Alex Kid bowing out. Um, so there you go. This is nice to start on a somber tone, but there you go. Uh, the death of a, of a famous character. Uh, not that he dies in it unless, unless you die. The games weren't detailed enough to have plots like that then. This isn't Avengers or anything, but um, yeah, you, get, you know what I mean. Let's move on. Um, Alien Soldier next. This was developed by Treasure. Treasure was a really kind of big, highly uh, critically acclaimed developer who used to kind of specialise in action games, mostly run and gun games or kind of shooters. Uh, they always had these kind of interesting shoot 'em ups and run and gun shooting games, but each of which had an interesting wee quirk. Um, so this is Alien Soldier. This is a Treasure game. Um, and it's a running gun game. It plays a lot like Gunstar Heroes, which is also in this uh, package, which you'll see later. But it's more about boss fights. So there's like 40, 50 odd levels in it, and a lot, a lot of those levels involved as boss fights. Um, it's good. To, it's good that this is on here because the physical version, if you if you collect uh, physical Mega Drive games, is really expensive because it was one of the last um, Mega Drive games released. The, the, one of the last really good Mega Drive games released. Um, and it only came out in Japan and Europe and America only um, was distributed through the Sega channel which was like a kind of online, really early kind of internet style service where you could plug a kind of modem thing into your Mega Drive and download games through it, like a subscription service. Um, so that was the only way Americans got it, so for them this is a really good way to play a game that wasn't actually released on the Mega Drive, oh, on the Genesis in America. Um, it's a brilliant game, um, definitely worth it. It's difficult though, so bear that in mind, it's going to take some getting used to A lot of treasure games were difficult, so, uh, but rewarding if you if you stick with it. Then there's Alien Storm, um, it's a kind of 
mainly a beat em up game. Uh, there's a lot of beat em ups were a, a, a massive genre in the kind of late eighties, early nineties. Um, it's one of my favourite genres, but it's kind of a dying art now. There's, there's, it's rare to get a good beat em up. Um, and Alien Storm was an okay one. Um, basically, aliens have taken over the earth, so you've got to kill them. Uh, so you can be like a guy or a woman or a weird robot thing which can self-destruct, which always thought was a bit weird because it basically destroy all your health <laughs> to, to, to kill the enemies. Um, it kind of switches up uh, genres every now and then, so now and then, so for the most part it's beat em up, uh, standard beat em up stuff, but then it switches to like light gun shooting sections. Uh, where you kind of just wreck the joint and shoot aliens um, and then after every now and then you'll get the odd kind of running section which plays almost like a shoot 'em up um, which isn't very good. It's an okay game, it's, it's decent enough in, if you play it in co-op it's, it's a good laugh um, but it's not one you're going to keep coming back to over and over and over again, it's, it's a nice wee, uh, it's an interesting little curio but uh, it's worth playing once. Uh, next is Altered Beast, now I'm, even, even when Altered Beast was released back in the day um, it was actually, it was the first uh, pack-in game that came with the Mega Drive in the UK um, before Sonic came out, so when I got my Mega Drive it was with Alter Beast, it came with Alter Beast. Um, so that was one of the first Mega Drive games I played because I, I, I got it with my Mega Drive. Um, and I liked it then, and I still like it now, I've got, I've got a kind of soft spot for it. But even back then I remember, and I'm old enough to remember reading the reviews back in the day, and even back then it was getting scores of 16-70% in magazines because it was kind of clunky, it was big and chunky graphics but it was clunky, it looked apart but it was, um, it didn't feel fast or, 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 or intuitively fluid enough. But I really like it, it's, 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 it's really bad. Um, in a good way, the, the sounds all muffled, but it was good for the time. You're basically a guy. You're, you're, you've got to rescue. I felt I forget the kind of exact details of the story, but a woman's been kidnapped by Zed, who's like a, or Zeph, sorry, who's like a kind of evil, nefarious bad guy. Uh, but he can transform into different beasts um, at the end of each stage. So, but luckily, you can collect these kind of power orbs and makes it makes your guy go. Um, and that turns him into various beasts, alters him into beasts, if you will. Um, and that's how you kind of defeat Zeph. But I, I, I really like it. It's, um, yeah, it's fun. It's daft. It's, it's, it's a bit rubbish, but um, I still enjoy it. So that, that's me. I like Alter Beast. I just bought a t shirt with Alter Beast logo on it. That's, that's how much I like it. See, I'm committed to the Alter Beast brand. Um, then there's Beyond Oasis, which was known in the UK as the story of Thor. Um, it's a kind of Zelda style action RPG game, it's got a really good storyline. Um, it's more action than it is RPG, there's still RPG elements but it's more kind of action involved. Um, but given that, there are, as you're about to see, there are a lot of RPGs in this game and in this kind of compilation some of them are pretty hardcore. Uh, so it's nice to have one that's kind of more accessible to those who are kind of new to RPG gaming and may not be, uh, may not bleed. Uh, <laughs> so you can bleed RPG, but I don't really know what the analogy there is. Maybe when you cut them open, um, it takes turns for them to bleed slowly. Um, I'm, I'm losing the analogy here, but you get the point. Um, this is an RPG that is more accessible than most, so fill your boots. Then there's Biohazard Battle. It's a kind of side scroll and shoot 'em up. It's a pretty standard one. Um, it's actually the only side scroll and shoot 'em up in this entire compilation, um, which is weird. It does the job, but given that in like. Uh, in 2016, so a couple of years ago, Sega got the rights to Technosoft's games, um, and Technosoft did stuff like the amazing uh, Thunder Force games, which were kind of known at the time as being the best shoot 'em ups on uh, on the Mega Drive. It's weird that they didn't kind of stretch to putting some of those in here, um, and it's also weird that this is the only shooter, considering there's something like 10 RPGs um, to 51 games here, and only one being a side scroll shoot 'em up, which was a kind of big genre, uh, big genre at the time. Um, so it's a bit of a shame, but at the same time. Um, most of these games were published by Sega, and I'm the top of my, off the top of my head, I don't remember Sega publishing too many uh, shoot 'em ups, so that's probably why most of them are third party efforts. There you go, Biohazard Battle, it's okay, it's just, it's just, it is what it is, it's, there's nothing groundbreaking there, but it's fun enough. Um, then there's Bonanza Brothers, which is actually one of my favourites in the whole thing. I've, I've always loved Bonanza Brothers, it's a kind of um, unsung hero in the Mega Drive lineup, if you ask me, so I'm delighted that it's on here. Uh, you play as Mobo and Robo, who are a couple of uh, criminals basically and you make your way through all these different um, locations, you're hitting all these various joints uh, to collect uh, the treasure that's, that's going to sw basically swipe all the swag and then escape through a blimp on the top of, the, of each level. Um, and you do this by collecting all, it's almost kind of stealth but fun stealth, I hate stealth in games but it's kind of fun here because you can suddenly decide, oh stuff it and just 
go guns blazing and kill everyone. Although nobody dies, which is quite fun as well. You, you can just pop them with a sweet gun and then they fall on the backside, but then they get up again after after a while. So um, no, I enjoy it. It's really good fun, um, and I've got I've got some planned. Uh, regarding Bonanza Brothers later on, there's an interesting stage later on in the game uh, which I want to look at in more detail on the site, so look an eye, uh, keep an eye out for that because it's, it's quite good fun and nobody really talks about it, so yeah, look out for that. But yeah, Bonanza Brothers, I really like it, worth worth a look. Uh, Columns next, this is uh, Sega's mandatory uh, block dropping puzzle game. Obviously once Tetris came out and uh, set the world alight, every developer worth its salt and publisher worth its salt had to have its own block drop and puzzle game. Uh, so this one is your classic, you've got kind of blocks of three colours dropping down um, and you or columns if you will um, and you can shuffle the colours around and if you match three in a row um, it, it can really disappear. Um, it's all kind of fairly bog standard stuff and it's fine, it does the job. Um, the three colour thing is a bit weird, it gets to the point even in like later levels where when the blocks are all slamming down you don't really have much control over them anymore because it's going so fast. You still tend to do really well and set up enormous combos just because the requirements to clear stuff, uh, stuff is, are so small, like just three colours in a row. Um, so yeah, it's, it's weird, it's a game that can end up lasting a hell of a long time before you get game over and most of the time not through anything you've done, <laughs> it just keeps going. Yeah, but it's fine, I quite enjoy it. Then there's Columns 3, <laughs> Columns 2 just um, has, has retired, uh, there's no time, no, ain't nobody got time for Columns 2. Uh, columns 3 is more of the same really, it's got, the single player mode is kind of more uh, progression based so instead of just kind of playing one thing over and over again forever, you're given this kind of pyramid and you work your way through different rooms uh, just doing all the reverses matches, so, so that's it's a slightly different take on it but it's the same basic principle so if you're kind of Columns junkie, uh, this is a, a second hit for Oh, that's a horrible <laughs> drug related metaphor, let's just move on quickly. Um, Comic Zone next. Uh, this is a, it's an interesting one, this is near the kind of twilight of the Mega Drive. Um, as, as it was kind of, as everyone was preparing for the next generation, uh, there was more kind of interesting games getting released for the Mega Drive. The Comic Zone was one of them, so you're a kind of artist who uh, is a comic book artist and illustrator and he gets sucked into his comic basically um, and has to kind of fight the enemies that he's already created yeah, which is quite clever. Um, it's cool, each level is kind of made up of different panels like a comic book would be uh, so you jump from, literally jump from panel to panel uh, fighting enemies and stuff. Enemies take a bit too long to defeat for my liking so you're, you're kind of sitting there just battering at them for ages and ages before they'll die which is quite annoying um, and it can be a bit tricky as well there's a couple of kind of sneaky bits as a result of that um, but it's a clever idea and it's worth sticking with even though it's quite difficult um, it's, it's an interesting one you won't have played anything like it which is, which is for sure um, then there's Crackdown based on an arcade game uh, also called Crackdown, obviously. Um, it's cool, it's maybe one of the most basic looking games on here, um, but that's not to say you should avoid it, it's, it's, it's decent enough. I was just capturing the footage for, for this, I put a good hour into it without really noticing, so it's still got that kind of hook. Um, you basically go through a number of enemy bases, and there's, there's X's on the floor, um, and you've got to get to each X and plant a bomb, um, and then basically leave the stage before the bomb blows up. Um, and that's it, it's pretty basic stuff, but um, still still quite enjoyable, um, so it's worth a go. Then there's Decap Attack, uh, starring Chuck D. Head, <laughs> the most, the strangest one of the strangest characters in, in, in the 90s. Um, Chuck D. Head is basically a zombie who can collect a little skull called Head um, and throw it at people, hence Chuck D. Head. Um, it's actually the fourth in a series of kind of games that played a lot like this. Uh, there was Kid Cool on the NES, uh, which will be featured in my NES encyclopedia coming in March. <laughs> Cheap plug. Um, Psycho Fox on the Master System, which I adored. It was a Japanese-only game called Magical Hat uh, Turbo Adventure or something like that um, on the Mega Drive, and then there was this Decap Attack, which is basically the Western version of Magical Hat. Um, although the levels were different and stuff. I like this one, it's, it's quirky, it's quite weird, you can uh, chop your head like I say and uh, defeat the enemies. It's, 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 again, it's a kind of chunky, a lot of Mega Drive games have this kind of chunky feel. Um, and this is one of those where everything just feels like slow and uh, a bit sluggish but still um, momentum based. Like once you get going you can kind of plough through a level like a big bulldozer, it's, it's, it's cool. 
Uh, but yeah, that's decap attack. It's it's worth a look. It's, again, it's another strange one. Um, if you, you want to play it and like it, some of the comic zone. Um, but there you go. Um, what else? Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, uh, which is a kind of localized version of Puyo Puyo games. Uh, so it's a bunch of kind of versus uh, modes. Uh, battles against a bunch of enemies from mainly from the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon which was out at the time uh, which I'll be covering on the site in, uh, in going forward um, but yeah Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine where you kind of um, if you don't play Puyo Puyo there, there, there's a million different versions of it there's, there's one out on the Switch as well actually Puyo Puyo Tetris but yeah it's basically dropping little kind of blob things and trying to match up the colours but set up combos to kind of force clear blobs onto your um, enemy screen which makes it harder to, to, to uh, beat the level so um, it's fun enough it, it, it takes a bit of uh, it takes a bit of practice to get to the stage where you can set up massive combos um, it's not as immediately accessible as Tetris but um, it's still fun nonetheless it's a good one then there's Dynamite Heady um, another treasure game uh, this is, this is a, another strange one as well. Uh, Heady is like a puppet who's got a detachable head. Um, so whereas in other kind of running gun games you collect various weapons to kind of shoot, here you collect different heads for Heady, um, which is, is quite is quite fun. But some of them like make him shrink and all that kind of stuff. This is cool. It's like power ups, but um, but in a kind of fun way of doing it. It's a really bizarre game. It's it's worth it's worth it's worth a play because it's um, it does loads of kind of weird and strange things that. that um, yeah, quirky. I think quirky is the best way to, to describe Dynamite Heady. It's definitely it's a fun one, one of the better Mega Drive games in, in here, I would say. Um, then there's Esport City Under Siege, which is another one of my kind of personal favourites, which doesn't really get a lot of love. Um, well, I can see why, because the second level is dull as hell, uh, but the rest of it's quite interesting. So basically, you start off as a cop. Um, it's basically Robocop the game if, if Sega were in control of it because you start as just a normal cop for the first couple of levels um, walking about as like a running gun, I can't, not running gun but more kind of action platformer so you're on about shooting enemies and there's a big helicopter boss which is quite annoying at the start because you're really vulnerable just as a cop you play a couple of stages as a cop and then suddenly you don this big enormous robot suit and can then go around about just blasting the hell out of everyone um, so suddenly just it goes up a year <laughs> like after a couple of stages and you go oh okay I get it now um, so it's quite good fun so yeah eSports worth sticking with at first you'll play it and think I don't really get this but stick with it because when you get this, the robot suit you suddenly go alright okay this is fun um, this is a good one then there's Fatal Labyrinth it's a kind of roguelike, um, kind of early roguelike game. It's got procedurally generated stages, which I'm not really a massive fan of um, in modern gaming, so um, it doesn't change when, just because it's retro. Uh, you basically get to fight your way up to the 30th floor uh, to fight a big dragon and get a holy goblet from it, as you do. Um, story of my life, mate. Um, but yeah, there we go. It's, it's, it's what it is. I, I don't like this genre in general, so I was never going to be a big fan of Fatal Labyrinth. But there it is. It's it's another kind of string to the to the package's bow. So if that's your type of, if that's your jam, as I believe the kids say, uh, then fill your boots because there's there's a good one. Um, by all accounts, I, I don't really get it. Uh, then there's Flicky. I like Flicky. <laughs> this is the kind of things I I don't like Fatal Labyrinth, but I like Flicky. Uh, where you're like a, a wee blue bird called Flicky. Flicky is actually a species, as you'll see later on, not just one bird. It's a, Flicky is a, a type of blue bird uh, native to the Sega universe. Uh, you've got to run about collecting these wee yellow birds called Chirps um, and take them to the exit without them getting caught. It's a cool one. It's, it's, it's interesting because you don't just jump over enemies. Um, when you jump, you leave a. When you run, move about, you leave a trail of chips behind you. Like when you collect the wee birds, you kind of they trail behind you. And if an enemy touches them, they they get split up from the pack. So not only do you have to jump over enemies, you have to jump over them, leaving enough of an arc that none of the birds touch the enemies as well. Otherwise, they get separated and you need to go back and get them. So it's cool. It's it's it's, it's fun. Um, I like Flicky, and it's it's mindless. You can you can just play it without really thinking much about it. A wee fun one. Um, then there's Gain Ground. This is an interesting one. Um, it's a cross between a kind of top-down uh, arcade-style kind of run-and-gun shooter type thing and a strategy game. So you start with like three characters um, and you've got to either reach the exit with all three characters or kill all the enemies who are on the screen before the time runs out. Uh, so sometimes you don't even 
you, instead of shooting all the enemies, you just have to get to the end well, without them killing you. Um, and then it swaps to your next character and your next character, and you have to get all the characters through if, or, or kill all the enemies, whatever you decide. Um, but as you go along the way, there's 40 levels in it, but there's another 20. Uh, so another 20 in total, so there's another 17 characters dotted about different levels and if you collect them along the way they get added to your roster um, so they're, they're basically your extra lives because when you, a character dies they're gone forever but all 20 characters have got their own weapons and abilities and all that so it's cool so you eventually kind of build up this squad of guys who um, you want to get to the end of each stage um, so it's, it's fun, it's an interesting one, uh, worth a look then there's Galaxy Force 2 uh, which is kind of real shooter type thing in the style of like, Space Harrier, which is coming later on. Um, so it's Galaxy Force 2. The first Galaxy Force was only in arcades for like a month or two, and then Sega was just like yoink <laughs> and replaced it with Galaxy Force 2 really quickly, uh, which added like new levels and fixed a load of bugs the first one had. So Galaxy Force 2 really is the only Galaxy Force game for the most part. Like the, the original one is just obscenely rare because it lasted 20 seconds before it was replaced. Um, so yeah, this is Galaxy Force 2. It's okay. Uh, it's pretty forgettable. Uh, there's a reason why Galaxy Force 2 isn't rhymed off with the likes of Outrun and Space Harrier and, 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 and this is it, it's just, it's, it, does what it does what it does. Um, then there's Golden Axe, one of the kind of the more famous beat-em-ups in the, in the Sega uh, era uh, where you play as a, a barbarian, a kind of female warrior or a dwarf called Gilead Thunderhead um, and uh, yeah, you, you, you fight your way through various medieval uh, fantasy settings to try and defeat the evil Death Adder, um, who's a, quite the badass. Uh, Golden Axe is cool, it's, um, it's it's shown its age a bit now, like, like the, the combat's quite ropey, um, and you can see it's kind of arcade backgrounds because some of the enemies are really cheap, and um, you'll be dying a hell of a lot in this one because that was just the way of arcade gaming, uh, so you can see that, that kind of underlying cheapness that, that is, is designed to make you die a lot. Um, which makes it quite difficult because you've got limited continues here and unlike in the arcades where you can just keep firing 10 P's into it. That's right, arcade used to cost 10 P, children. Um, but yeah, it's it's I enjoy it. I like Golden Axe. And there's, you can ride dinosaurs, which is fun, and one level's on the back of a uh, an eagle, <laughs> which is for, for no reason. Uh, a giant eagle and one's on one village is on the back of a giant turtle. I like it. It's, it's weird, but um, it's cool. Then it was Golden Axe 2, which is more of the same with different dinosaurs really. Not <laughs> uh, the same characters, just different stages. The only real difference was you collect magic in the Golden Axe games and those are your kind of special moves instead of, whereas in most beat em ups you, uh, you've got like a special move button and when you hit with it you lose a bit of health. Um, in Golden Axe you instead have this kind of finite supply of magic potions, like wee blue potions. Um, and when you fire off magic that's how you, you use your special move. In the first game, uh, when you triggered your magic you just used up all the potions you had at the time so if you collected, the more potions you collected the more powerful the magic moves so if you had 8 you would use up 8 in Golden Axe 2 you hold the button down and choose how much magic you want to use so if you're fighting a smaller enemy and you've got like 12 potions you only need to use 3 if you want and you can save the other 9 instead of using them all up but that's the only real difference, it's, it's, fine. it's maybe a slightly better game because of that um, so it's maybe the best of the 3 um, that's right I said the 3 because Golden Axe 3 is on here as well um, this one's a bit rubbish, <laughs> to be fair. It replaces the three uh, kind of main characters with four new ones. There's a new barbarian guy and a new female kind of warrior, as well as like a giant in this weird kind of half man, half panther thing. Um, this one didn't come out in Europe at all, um, and only really made it to America through the Sega Channel, uh, like. Um, thing he did, like Alien Soldier did, um, so, but I think that was more because Sega knew it was a bit rubbish, only really got a proper release in Japan, uh, but here it is now, Golden Axe 3, so you can get torn into that and see what became, how the mighty fell, uh, Golden Axe 3 is a bit rubbish. Then there's Gunstar Heroes, another treasure game, this one's a classic, this is a fantastic game, another kind of run and gun game, but it's a kind of definitive, uh, other than the kind of Metal Slug SNK games, and this is, uh, Gunstar Heroes is one of the most definitive kind of running gun games. It's fantastic, especially in co-op. If you can find another person, if you can find another person to play it with, it's fantastic. Um, lots of action, lots of it's amazing screen filling weapons, great boss battles. Really satisfying. Your the bosses have like numbers instead of a health bar. Your boss has got like a, a number that shows their health. So when you're standing in a safe spot and just firing away and watching their number just 
stream down, like the, the numbers, the, the health is just kind of pouring away. It's so satisfying to get that down to zero. Um, it's a fantastic game. Gunstar Heroes is easily one of the best games on here, especially in co-op, so, so get tore into that. Then there's Kid Chameleon, um, really a curious one. There's basically an arcade uh, uh, an arcade game which is sucking kids into it um, and basically claiming their souls or something like that. So you're Kid Chameleon who's one of the coolest kids on the block. Um, so he then decides to get sucked into the arcade game and try and free the world of some box like that, but is um, is interesting. So it's a platformer. It's a slightly clunky platformer. Uh, again, it's got kind of really slippery controls, which is which is an ideal. Um, and everything feels a bit too light, and there's not a lot of when you land on enemies, it doesn't really have that a good kind of impact. You just bounce a million miles off them, and it's, it's all kind of it's kind of weird and slippery. But it's got a really cool gimmick where there's loads of masks that you can collect. So a samurai mask and a Jason mask on Friday the Thirteenth, and what well, a mask that turns you into a tank, and one that turns you into like a bug and each mask has its own different abilities and that's that's quite a cool idea um so yeah it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting one it's it's not the best platformer on here by a long shot but it's it's a clever one it's got a kind of cult following and it's easy to see why it's it's it had a um a lot of clever kind of ideas and um yeah like it's, it's a cool one um if not a great one then there's land stalker which is a kind of isometric uh, action adventure, you know, kind of RPG type thing, similar to Beyond Oasis, and that is more approachable for uh, people who maybe aren't massively into RPGs. I say more approachable. The, the controls are horrendous uh, for 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 what it is because it, 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 it's isometric. Um, you you can only really move in diagonals. You can do up, down, left, and right, but it doesn't always cor correlate to the direction you think you're going to be going. Um, so, because he only moves in diagonals, so that's pretty horrible. So you only, you need to basically move in diagonals all the time, and especially on the switch because it's the Joy-Con D-pad, if you want to call it that, has no diagonals. It's it's really uncomfortable to play. Um, it's still a fun game, but it's yeah, it's you, you're going to get there's a, 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 a learning curve there as you get used to the controls. It's it's, it's awkward to play at first. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, then there's Light Crusader, which is a similar kind of idea to Landstalker, but with a less cartoony look. Um, although on the bright side, you can move in eight directions here. You can actually move up, down, and left and right instead of just having to move diagonally. Uh, so that makes it far less frustrating to control. It's a, it's, it can be tricky at first to play um, because at the, at the start you're kind of walking about a dungeon, uh, uh, not a dungeon, a uh, kind of castle crowns with no idea where to go. Uh, but there's a um, there's a hidden gravestone somewhere that you, you push to trigger a dungeon, and that's how you basically get started. So, that, there's a free one. That one's on. That one's on me. <laughs> there you go. Fill your boots. Um, right, proper RPG time now. We're looking at Fantasy Star Two. Um, this actually completes the Fantasy Star series on the Switch. Fantasy Star One. Uh, which was on the Master System is part of the Sega Ages collection, which is released separately on Switch. Um, it's not out yet at the time of me recording this, but it's out in Japan already, uh, so you can download it there or wait a, a month or so before it comes out here. Uh, but yeah, so the first Fantasy Star technically is already on the Switch, um, and you'll be able to get that soon if you want it. Um, and now this is Fantasy Star 2, 2, 3, and 4 are all on this compilation, so that's the full kind of main uh, quadrilogy, if you will, of Fantasy Star now on the Switch. So the second one was the biggest game ever at the time when it came out. It was on a 6 megabit cartridge, which is about 750 kilobytes. <laughs> that was the biggest game at the time. Um, it's set like a thousand years after the first game. Um, and its battle system's a bit clunky these days, but still, it's worth like, The plot's good, it's, it's fun. Uh, but yeah, it's really, if you're new to RPGs, it's, it's a hell of a... Um, a slog getting into it because it's the battle and the battle system is so primitive compared to modern ones. Um, you're really going to struggle to get into it, but once you do, you'll get it. I think I'm, I'm hoping, and, and you'll get it. The plot will, will convince you to keep going, so it's, it's worth sticking with. Um, same with Fantasy Star 3, there's the slightly better, slightly improved. Uh, this is a kind of clever setup. This one takes place over three different generations. So split into different sections and um, you marry someone in one generation um, and then you have a kid and your kid is then who you play in the next generation so depending on who you marry you'll play as a different character in the next generation and the next generation after that um, and the ending changes stuff as a result. Um, Sega added a kind of auto battle feature uh, which is kind of useful if you aren't so keen on the battling mechanics you can just kind of leave it running um, but it's again it's, it's, it's still 
it's still kind of got a barrier there to entry, which is kind of tricky to get into. Once you do, you you you're off and running. But it's um, yeah, it's, it's it's a hard one to kind of get into. Um, and again, same with Fantasy Star Four, which is more of the same. There's more story this time in Four, and there's like new combo attack things. Um, and again, it's set a thousand years after Fantasy Star Two. So this is a story that just takes place over millennia, basically. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty epic. Uh, this was the last game in the main Fantasy Star series, so since then we've had like the Fantasy Star Online games, uh, which you can still play offline, and the Fantasy Star Universe kind of spin-offs, but there's never been a Fantasy Star 5, so this was the end of the main, so Fantasy Star 1 on Sega Ages uh, on the Switch, and then 2, 3 and 4 on here, that's your full final, uh, your full Fantasy Star, you know, I say Final Fantasy there, that's your full Fantasy Star collection um, on the Switch, so that's good if you're into your RPGs. Next is Ristar or Rystar. I've seen people call it Rystar, but I don't really know why. I, I would say Ristar. Probably Restar actually, because it's Japanese. Um, Restar was uh, created by. It was actually created as a, a prototype character when uh, Sonic Team were coming up with Sonic, uh, what was to become Sonic Team. Um, Ristar slash Restar slash Rystar was a, a kind of prototype character who was then replaced with Sonic later on. Um, but then years later he got his own game and, and it's, an, it's a curious one, It's uh, you can see the Sonic kind of heritage, it looks a bit like a Sonic game would, uh, but it's, it's a, an interesting kind of grabbing mechanic, so instead of jumping on enemies and that you press the B button to grab them um, and kind of pull yourself towards them and stick the head on them, so he's very much a Glaswegian inspired character who just walks about headbutting folk. Um, it was cool, the, the, the grabbing thing makes for some interesting kind of gimmicks so you can kind of grab. Uh, grab poles and grab various bits of the scenery, which is which is interesting. Not the best platformer ever made, but it's a it's a it's a, a curious one and, and a different one. So um, it's it's good to, it's good that it's on here because it's something a bit different. Next up is Shadow Dancer, or should I say Shadow Dancer: Colon Secret of Shinobi. Uh, this was the second Shinobi game that was released on the Mega Drive. There was a Shinobi game. Um, in arcades before and that, that would get ported to the Master System uh, that didn't make it to the Mega Drive but then there was Revenge of Shinobi uh, which for some reason doesn't comes later even though it starts with R um, I don't really know why it comes later on <laughs> in, in, the, in the series but there you go um, but yeah so and then Shadow Dancer was the, there was the second Shinobi game on the Mega Drive um, it plays a lot like other Shinobi games where you walk about kind of firing shurikens at people and and, uh, and the like, but this time you've got a dog that you can kind of sick on your enemies, so you can kind of, um, as in sick, as in throw your dog at enemies, not make your dog be like vomit them. Um, you can, so you can kind of send your dog out to beat people up, which is which is quite cool. Um, it's a cool enough game. It's 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 your kind of standard action uh, platformer type thing. The Shinobi games are all quite cool. You feel quite cool playing them because you just kind of one wee sure can just kind of carves through an enemy so it's they're really satisfying to play and this is no different they're slow um, and they're a bit awkward to move in but they're they're, they're, um, they're satisfying and, and this is kind of no different and it's just a good one then there's Shining Force which is a really good kind of turn based strategy game I'm not really a big fan of turn based strategy games except for the kind of um, Fire Emblem series to an extent this is a good one um, it's partly developed by Sonic Software Planning um, who eventually became Camelot who made like Golden Sun and the good kind of Mario Tennis and golf games and stuff. So this is an early game by them, a Shining Force. Um, so it's a good one if you're if you're curious about turn-based strategy. This is a good kind of early uh, example of it in the West, certainly at least. There's turn-based strategies long before that in Japan, but not a lot of them made it to the West. But this one did. Um, so it's worth a look. It's, it's a good kind of early way, easier way into the genre. Um, and then you get Shining Force Two, which is more of the same. Um, well, the first game is kind of split into chapters, this one isn't, so you can kind of go wherever you like and go back to bits later on. Um, <clears throat> this is actually the fifth game in the Shining series. Um, the first was actually Shining in the Darkness, which is also in here. Um, and Shining in the Darkness is a totally different game, so although the Shining Force games are both kind of tactical RPGs, this one, Shining in the Darkness, was actually a dungeon crawler. Um, there's loads of kind of big colourful cutscenes before you go into the dungeon, which is quite cool. But once you get in there, it's a weird first-person dungeon crawler, like the, the really like the really old dungeon crawling games. Um, 
look like this, a kind of first person maze type thing. Um, and combat's a bit boring in that. So it's, it's, it's cool to have in here, Shining in the Darkness is a, a kind of the, the, the first game in the Shining series. But the two Shining Force games are, are probably much better and more entertaining to play than this one. Uh, but it's on here, it's, it's there if you, if, you, if you want to get stuck in, by all means. Uh, Shinobi 3 is on here as well. Uh, Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Master, I should say. Um, this is the third Shinobi game on Mega Drive. See, Revenge of Shinobi, then Shadow Dancer, and then Shinobi 3. Um, and this one's brilliant. It's, it's maybe a wee bit easier than the other ones, which is which is fine. Uh, but it's got some cool kind of horse riding sections as well, where you kind of jump over things and, and throw your shurikens at enemies, which is quite cool. You can also kind of sprint now and do wall jumps and stuff, so that it's more kind of faster paced than the other ones. Um, you get a bit more flexibility as to how you can move about and that makes it more fun. Uh, but this is cool, it's, it's another Shinobi game. The Shinobi games are all quite cool and this is this is as well. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy that the three of them are on here. Uh, then it's the big one, your man Sonic the Hedgehog. You you know it, I know it, everybody knows it. Um, yeah, it's Sonic. Um, it's good, it's, 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 it runs fairly well. All, all the emulation in, in this uh, package, which is all obviously an important thing. I've not encountered any massive issues with it. Um, there was one point while playing Sonic where it suddenly got really jerky, uh, but it's hard to tell whether um, that was a problem with the game itself, or maybe the Switch was downloading something in the background, or, or maybe there was something else going on, because I regularly download games in the background while I'm playing, so it's hard to tell because 99% of the time everything's been running totally smoothly and I've not had any issues. It's just this one moment it suddenly got quite choppy and I was going, oh that's weird. Um, so I don't want to commit to saying, because I've put like, other than other than playing all 50 odd games here, um, I've put a lot of time into playing them as well and not really encountered any. So I don't want to make it sound like it's uh, rife, but that was the only, literally the only time I noticed it and thought, oh that's a bit weird. Um, but that said, it's Sonic, you know what it is. Moving on. <laughs> uh, Sonic 2, again, same deal. But a better game than the first one because it added the spin dash and stuff like that. Um, and Tails turned up even though he's a bit of a knob. Um, it's good that... Um, it's still good, it makes it interesting. Um, and yeah, Sonic 2 is a good one. It's a, it's a classic. Everyone knows Sonic and Sonic 2. No Sonic 3 here, for some reason. No Sonic 3 and no Sonic and Knuckles. Um, which is strange, but... There you go, hey ho. Uh, but yeah, Sonic and Sonic 2, a nice weekend, a double bill of like the best platformers, two of the best platformers on the Mega Drive. Um, and yeah, you know what they are, you, you know Sonic, it's, it's all good. All good in the hood. Um, and there's more Sonic games on there, they may not have Sonic 3, but they do have Sonic Spinball, the kind of weird pinball spin-off uh, feature in Sonic. Um, it's okay, you, 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 kind of, you flip him around the table but you've got a lot more control over him than you would in a pinball game because it's still Sonic. Uh, so when you fire him with the pinball you can then use left and right to kind of guide him a bit, uh, which is quite cool. Um, it's fine, it's, it's not the greatest game in the world because it's pinball. Pinball video games are always kind of hit or miss affairs uh, because you really need to like pinball to like a pinball game. Um, and there's not always a crossover there. Gamers not, aren't always necessarily pinball fans, so you need to kind of have that frame of mind. But it's fine, it's, it's decent. Um, but although it's a bit murky, it's, it's always it's a kind of dingy looking game, which is, which is a shame, but there you go. And then there's Sonic 3D Blast, which was developed by Traveller's Tales, who then went on to do like, the Lego games and stuff like that. Um, it's a weird one. So it's a, you, Flicky's are back. Remember Flicky from earlier on in the video, the wee blue? Um, but uh, well, Flicky's you'll have noticed, you might notice when you play Sonic, when you destroy enemies, the enemies are basically robots that Dr. Robotnik, not Eggman Robotnik, has put basically Sonic's furry friends, like animals of the forest have been put in these robots, um, and when they burst out, uh, wee animals come out, and sometimes you'll see a Flicky, some, the, a Flicky's kind of one of the animals, sometimes it bursts out. So in Sonic 3D Blast you basically have to rescue all the Flickies. Um, so the idea, so <clears throat> my throat's catching, um, it sounds like I'm tearing up, <laughs> the idea of rescuing flickies, I really just got a sore throat, because um, I'm nearly talking for an hour, but yes, yeah, so you, you've got to run around and gather all the flickies, again most of them have been trapped inside robot enemies, so you've got to kind of attack them, but because it's a 3D isometric thing, jumping on them is a bit hard to judge, so you, the best bet is to kind of roll into them instead. 
you collect your flickies and you kind of make your way through each stage and, and, and it's, it's cool, it's a fun enough game. Um, it's a weird one, it's, it's, it never really got the love I think it maybe deserved because it was, it was fun, it was, it was something different and I think people weren't really um, at the risk of sounding like Marty McFly in Back to the Future. I guess you guys weren't ready for that yet but your kids are going to love it. Um, although your kids didn't love it because nobody really plays it anymore. Um, but it's fine, it, it was re-released on the Saturn um, and got a PC release. I'll maybe do a, a kind of more in-depth look at Sonic 3D Blast at some point in the future and compare the different versions but for now it's, it's different, it's something different. It, it's, it's got a wee bit of a learning curve when you first get into it, it feels a bit odd uh, but if you stick with it, especially if you use the analog stick to control it, even though it's not analog it still feels a bit better uh, than using the quote unquote d-pad on the switch. Um, so yeah that's your Sonic lineup. Space Harrier 2 next is if kind of was really big in arcades for Sega. It's a kind of uh, 3D looking uh, game where you, you is on rails kind of shooter where you fly about or run about. So when you land on the ground, he runs, but he's got a kind of jetpack that he flies about and shoots enemies. Um, it's fine. It's it doesn't run anywhere near as smooth as it does in arcades. So if you're really um, big on your Space Harrier, you might want to wait until it eventually inevitably ends up on Sega Ages on the Switch. Um, but yeah, this, this is what it is. It's, it's fine. It's, it's one of the kind of Sega's classics. Um, so it's good that it's on here, but it's maybe not necessarily the best uh, example. There, there are other kind of Sega 3D uh, type, uh, 3D type arcade ports which never made it to this collection. So like Outrun and um, although the Mega Drive version wasn't very good at that, but it certainly Super Hang On, which was excellent on the Mega Drive, isn't on here. So it's, that's a shame. But Space Harrier 2 is here, so. Uh, there you go. Now, now you're talking Streets of Rage. Uh, it's another beat em up in the style of uh, Golden Axe and uh, stuff like that, but this one is just fantastic. You, you got Axel, Blaze, um, and Adam in the first game, um, and you can run about. Destroying, uh, beating up various thugs using the likes of poles and broken bottles and pepper for some reason. There's like a pepper uh, weapon in this which is a bit rubbish. It just stuns the guys, makes them sneeze. Um, and the aim is to get to the end and defeat the evil Mr. X who's kind of ruling the city with an iron fist. Uh, it's got some really weird moments. Like the, the special move button, whereas in most fighting games, this, like I said earlier, the special move is just like a, a strong a stronger attack. Here you, you summon a police car. <laughs> the screen goes off. It goes off screen and the police car comes out and goes and fires like a ridiculous barrage of bullets. Um, and then they take you back to, to the action and then you see everyone just dying. Uh, which is a bit strange. Um, but Streets of Rage is a fun one. Um, it holds up the music by Yuzo because Hero is incredible. It's um, proper like kind of thumping music. You'll be turning this one up as you play it. Um, but it is not the best Streets of Rage game. The best Streets of Rage game is Streets of Rage 2, which is also on here. This is one of my top five games of all time um, on any system. Uh, I will play I, maybe once a fortnight I'll play Streets of Rage 2, whatever it's on, whether it's on a Mega Drive or on one of these kind of compilations that Sega brings out um, regularly or uh, even whether it's on an emulator, sorry kids, don't tell, don't tell the law. Um, but yeah, Streets of Rage 2 is just flawless. Uh, again, the music, the music's even better. The combat feels a lot better. The special weapons aren't police cars anymore. It's, it's just like proper um, strong attacks. Um, everything just feels brilliant. They're so satisfying when you hit enemies. It's really, really sharp sound effects when you hit enemies. Is that you don't just? It's not just a wee blip. You use proper. Really harsh sound effects. Um, oh, it's a fantastic game. I'm, I'll, I'll, I will be properly going into Streets of Rage 2 in the future on the site because it's it's a masterpiece. Uh, but having it on here is worth the price of admission alone. To be totally honest, um, I adore Streets of Rage 2, so that's, I'm glad that's on here. Uh, this, that, that was first on my list um, of games I wanted on here. Toe Jam and Arrow, then Street, uh, Streets of Rage 2, then Toe Jam and Arrow. Uh, that's my list, <laughs> my must-have list, and yeah, there you go, Street Series 2. Um, Street Series 3 is on here as well. They kind of got a bit too clever for their own boots, for their boots in this one. Um, too big for their boots, I suppose I should say. Um, and tried loads of weird things that they added, like 
um, a weird professor, robotic professor guy where you can pick up weapons and turn them into glowing energy orbs and stuff and there's like a section with a time bomb going off and it's really annoying um, and you can unlock a kangaroo and play as a kangaroo which is just strange um, so you say 3 just got it tried it started it tried too hard basically and the music isn't quite as good and stuff so they kind of it, it, it's, it's very much it's the Goldilocks series uh, the, the Streets of Rage series is basically three bears Streets of Rage was good but it was a bit too simplistic Streets of Rage 3 tries far too hard and just goes over the top Streets of Rage 2 is just right that's the that's the third bed in the in the metaphor here that's, that's the perfectly uh, the perfectly created porridge <laughs> in this Three Bears analogy uh, but yeah it's good to have the whole trilogy on there because the whole trilogy is still fun one's still fun and three's still fun but two is flawless two is in a different strategy but there we go um, then there's Super Thunder Blade it's kind of the, the same kind of I don't say engine but it's the same kind of idea as Space Harrier 2 and uh, and stuff like that and um, what was the other one that was on earlier uh, Thingy Galaxy Force 2, it's the same kind of idea as those, um, only this time you're playing as a helicopter. It's a really difficult game, um, as you've seen this footage where I'm just getting destroyed all the time. Um, it's fun but it's tricky, it's, it's really hard to control and um, maybe not worth the effort uh, in learning it because learning now you used to because it's not that great, uh, but it's there anyway, so there you go. Then there's Sword of Vermilion, and it's an RPG with kind of hit and miss elements. Um, you explore the world map is a bit weird, it's a kind of first person viewpoint and it's a wee bit confusing at times. Uh, but when you get into battles it's real time instead of turn based which is quite cool. So again it's kind of RPG light in that um, it's, it's still got lots of RPG mechanics but the battle system is maybe more better suited to people who are used to action games rather than turn based uh, RPGs so it's maybe a bit easier to get into. But like I say exploring the world is a bit awkward and stuff so it's not, it's, it's that kind of weird jack of all trades but master of none. Um, so it's, it's a weird one. Try it out because you might like it, but it's, it's a strange one. Uh, then there's the Revenge of Shinobi, which for some reason turns up um, after the S's, even though it starts with R. Uh, actually, now that I look at the list written down, it's probably because this starts with a T. So <laughs> this comes it comes after Sword of Vermilion because the Revenge of Shinobi starts with a T instead of an R. Uh, but there you go. So this was the first Shinobi game on the Mega Drive. So you had the Revenge of Shinobi, then Shadow Dancer, then Shinobi Three, um, and this is so this is Revenge of Shinobi. This is a fantastic game again. Everyone knows the cheat, or everyone who back in the day who had it knew the cheat. Uh, so if you don't know, you go into options, go over the number of shurikens, make it zero, and just wait for a while and it'll turn into an infinity symbol and then you've got infinite shurikens so you can just get tore into everyone so that's essential for playing this game really no one plays no one who knew their salt played Revenge of Shinobi without doing that so do that um, but yeah it's a great game fantastic stuff um, oh, now Toe Jam and Errol that, another one of my favourites of all time oh, what a glorious game what a hilarious strange game it's basically Toe Jam and Errol and I'm going to do a full retrospective on, on the whole series coming up on the site because there's a new game coming soon and I'm really excited about it, I'm going to be reviewing that too. Um, but yeah, Toe Jam and Errol are basically two aliens who are from the planet Funkatron, they're, they're well into their funk music, uh, but they crash their spaceship on Earth by mistake and it shatters into ten pieces which are scattered throughout Earth. Um, so you have to make your way through different levels, finding the ship pieces and using the elevators for some reason to transfer to different parts of the world. Um, but the problem is all the earthlings are out to get you because you're aliens that have landed on space, uh, that have landed on Earth. Um, so they're all out to try and kill you. So there's weird kind of, um, almost like the, what, what the, the equivalent of um, aliens would, what the equivalent of earthlings would look like from an alien point of view. So like. Uh, later on you get like uh, fat American tourists and, and, and stuff like that and like uh, women pushing annoying screaming babies and shopping trolleys <laughs> and it's just basically the weirdest elements of society are all out to get you which is quite funny. I love Toe Jam and Errol and this, this kind of classics collection has got a kind of fast forward function, it's got a rewind function which a lot of emulator type 
things have where if you mess up you can rewind. But this has got a fast forward as well which is actually really useful because there's a lot of waiting about in Toe Jam Rail and it's a really slow paced game. When you get in the es escalators, escalators, when you get in the elevators at the end of each stage there's a really long sequence that plays out for no real reason. Uh, it almost looks like a loading screen but it isn't loading anything, it's just there for no reason. And you can just hold down the fast forward button and just get to the next level which is cool. Uh, the, the, each stage is really large and you can do either fixed worlds or procedurally generated. Um, but again, Errol, especially if he plays Errol, he walks really slowly. But again, you can hold down the fast forward button and explore the world really quickly. So it makes it it's a kind of fast paced version of Toe Jam and Errol, if you want, which is actually a real fun way to play it because it saves you a lot of time. Um, so yeah, I'm delighted that it's on here. It's a fantastic game. And the sequel's on here too, which is good Toe Jam and Errol in Panic on Funkatron, which doesn't really get anywhere near as much. Um, Recognition or remembrance, probably just as well, because it's not that it's not as good, no, nowhere near as good actually. Uh, it's just kind of two D um, platformer this time, and, and the, the, the gimmick is that they 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 got back to Funkatron after the first game ended. Spoilers, uh, but a bunch of Earthlings kind of clung on to the spaceship, and they're now it's the opposite round way around now. So now Earthlings are on Funkatron instead of the other way around. And you've got to capture them in glass jars for some reason. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not as good, it's not as fun to play, but it's the art design is bizarre. It's, it's a really cool looking game. Um, and again, the soundtrack is amazing like it is in the first one. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a cool little curio to play. Um, it's a nice kind of spin off of the first game. So by all means, play the first game and then look at the second one to see what direction the series could have gone in and had it not kind of basically filtered out at this point. We didn't see another Toe Jam and Arrow game for years and years and years, but like I say, we'll get on to that um, in a future article. Then there's Vector Man, which is kind of a strange one because um, it, it was similar to Donkey Kong Country at the time. It uses kind of pre-rendered 3D models to make the game look uh, like a 3D game, uh, make it basically look, make it look better than Mega Drive should be able to handle. Uh, so they rendered the characters in kind of fancy computers and then turn those into sprites basically to make it look 3D. Um, it's, it's quite strange, you can transform it, you can transform it into a drill and a bomb and a sort of kind of boatman type thing. You could swim underwater easier, it's, a, it's an interesting idea. I don't really, really like the art style personally, it's a bit too kind of odd for me. Um, a bit too mechanical looking, but um, um, it's cool, it's, it's, it's fun enough, it's, it's, it's another kind of tricky one, it takes a wee while to get used to the, the, um, how it plays, but um, it's certainly an interesting one to have in here. Um, also interesting that Vector Man 2 is in here as well, this is a kind of lesser known sequel. Um, it's more of the same but now you can transform it into different animals and insects, so like a, you can turn it into a fire ant <laughs> for some reason, or like a bug that's got a shield or, or a rhino. Um, but yeah, there you go. This one is actually a fun fact. Uh, Vector Man, the character is actually made up of 23 different sprites to give it that kind of weird motion. So instead of just being one sprite with anima animated, um, it's actually a load of different sprites all joined together and so it's kind of got that weird kind of fluid motion, that's how they do it. Um, it's just a strange game, but not a bad one, just a, it's a strange one, it's, it's worth, worth messing around with to see what you think of it. And then finally there's Virtua Fighter 2, uh, which is a strange one to, to add. Um, I get it, but it's weird. Basically Virtua Fighter was the big polygonal uh, fighting game, it was Sega's step into polygons, uh, along with Virtua Racing, you had Virtua Fighter and, and the like. Um, but then for, so, so the, the Saturn was, the, was might be the big Virtua Fighter console because obviously the Saturn handled 3D graphics and that was a big thing. Oh look, Virtua Fighter's on the Saturn, Virtua Fighter 2 is on the Saturn. And then for some bizarre reason they decided to release it on the Mega Drive as well and turn it into like a flat 2D fighting game. Which kind of feeds the purpose because Virtua Fighter on its own isn't the world's best fighting game. It was the 3D gimmick that made it, took it up a level and made people take notice and pay attention to it. Take the 3D out of it and it's a, just a kind of clunky fighting game and that's what we've got here. And it's just strange, it's not the best way to kind of end things off, but there you go, that's Virtua Fighter 2. And there you go in general, that's all 51 games in Mega Drive Classics slash Genesis Classics coming to the Switch. Now, I say 51. The... Xbox One and PS4 versions actually had 53. Uh, there's two Wonder Boy games, Wonder Boy 3 and Wonder Boy and Monster World, which aren't on here for some reason, and it's not quite clear why. I don't know if it's because there have since been Wonder Boy games re-released, um, and maybe Sega doesn't want to step on any toes. Maybe there's a reason why um, suddenly the Wonder Boy games are um, 
have been kind of removed. Uh, but there you go. There's also there's other kind of ones that are missing that were on the Steam version. Like I said earlier, the Steam version had uh, you bought each game individually and you could kind of build up a library. Um, so there was games that the the three Echo games, Echo Echo Two and Echo Junior, uh, were on the Steam version, not here. Eternal Champions, a weird kind of Street Fighter clone, uh, isn't on here, and obviously Sonic 3 isn't here, and Sonic and Knuckles isn't on here, so those are all missing, um, and we're on other versions of the game, uh, but for the most part you're still talking 51 games, and it looks like it's pretty much 30 quid um, is the standard going price for it, so that's really affordable for a whole bunch of games, especially when you consider the Sega Ages series, which is the kind of prime masterpiece versions of, of Sega's vintage games are going for like 5 or 6 quid each on the Switch, so the Sega Ages version of Sonic the Hedgehog, which is already on the Switch, um, is like 6 quid, and the Sega Ages version of the first Fantasy Star um, is like 6 quid, so you buy, what, let me do my maths, you buy 5 of those, and that's 30 quid, whereas for your 30 quid you can get 51 on here, so uh, it's fairly obvious, if you want an instant kind of retro library of Mega Drive games, especially in handheld mode do it, it like there's hits and misses all over the place which is only to be expected but when you're, when you're dealing with 51 games there's not a chance in hell you're going to love all 51 because that's just impossible um, but even if you enjoy 20 of them that's still 20 games for 30 quid that's still a great deal and when you've got like, like I say I'm, 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 the fact that Streets of Rage 2 and Toe Jam are on there alone uh, make it worth the money for me because I adore those games with every fibre of my being. Uh, but there you go, there's a lot on here um, and you're not going to love everything, but that doesn't matter. Oh, Bonanza Brothers as well, I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, there you go. Hopefully that helped you know, summarise everything that's on there. Uh, like I say, it's out on the Switch on the 6th of December uh, 2018, just in case you're watching this in the future. Um, in which case, hello. Uh, hope you enjoy your flying car. Um, and yeah, it's it's... I think it's a good purchase, I think it's worth getting if you're interested in retro gaming and you want a kind of um, a big bunch of retro games at once, this is this is a really good a really good purchase. Like I say, I've had no real issues with the uh, performance. Uh, to only that one uh, quirk that one kind of quirky bit and I think that's all it was. Um, I just saved my saved my state and kind of uh, quit out the game and reloaded it and it was fine again. I think it was just an odd kind of blip. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've had no performance issues whatsoever, and I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, so if you're into the old Mega Drive slash Genesis, you can't really go wrong. So yeah, there we go. Thank you very much for watching this. Um, please do do the usual YouTubey stuff that you you, you you know as you're the you're the viewer. I'm the I'm the content provider. You know how it works. Subscribe and do all the all the part I usually do. Go to tiredoldhack.com if you want more gaming goodness. Um, do follow me on Twitter for all the all the, the banter as I believe the, the, the modern youth call it um, and yeah otherwise thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the flip flop with another video very soon. Cheers guys bye bye